services on the basis of the people that uh, use them. Um, and, but we're not really talking about that today, uh, we're talking about some other stuff that we've been doing. Um, and I work with Tom a lot, but I'll let him introduce himself. Hello guys, uh, I'm Tom Spire. Um, I'm as Joe said, uh, we work together quite a lot. I kind of have two main loves in my life, I suppose. One is ranting about social injustice and the other is trying to do something about it, I suppose. So, um, Joe's going to kick off. Okay, um, so I guess today we want to talk to you about something different really, not the stuff that we do uh, through our kind of day jobs. Um, over the last year or so we've been running a project called Meat Market, um, and that's kind of what we want to talk to you about, more about the learnings that have kind of come out of that, um, and the things that we've kind of observed and seen through that process. Um, so about a year ago, uh, we've been doing a lot of work, so I've been doing a lot of work in schools and colleges and universities, uh, kind of working with kids, my mum's a teacher, um, and Tom had been doing loads of work with kind of kids on estates uh, in kind of areas around London about getting them involved in kind of creative projects. Um, and we'd started to, so Tom, I should also say Tom's wife is a teacher as well. Um, so we've, we've got some kind of understanding about how stuff works. Um, and yeah, we kind of picked up on a couple of things that just seemed mental. So um, from, I'm going to talk about three mental things, basically. Um, so the first one, um, is the way kind of young people were being presented and they were being talked about um, in the media and by big organisations. And there was kind of a lot of talk, and you see it even this week in the Daily Mail, uh, I think it was George Osborne or Michael Gove saying it's time to get tough on young people, uh, talking about the lack of work, I think, talking about the lack that they're unruly, that they're lazy, kind of all the things that have always been talked about about young people, I suppose. Um, and, but I just found it a completely demoralising message, both for myself and also for the, the people we were working with. Um, and there's a rhetoric that kind of runs through all this stuff that it's, it's kind of my fault, or it's your fault as a young person, all these problems that are going on around you. And I think it just fails to acknowledge the kind of systemic problems that we have in kind of our labour markets and education system and those types of things. Um, and it also didn't reflect our experience at all. So my experience with the people that I work with, uh, and the people that I know, and the people that we were working with in schools and stuff, is that they are like exciting, excited, interesting, uh, interesting people who just, who, who might be a bit fragile to be honest a lot of the time, but just need a kind of bit of support. So that's kind of the first mental thing. You should put through this side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second mental thing uh, was then the advice that was being given to these people uh, and these young kids um, that they were being offered, I suppose. Um, so I had a sister uh, who at the time had been out of work about a year. Uh, she was extremely demoralised and lonely during this whole process. Um, and she was basically being told to swallow her pride pretty much and to take anything that was given to her um, because a job is better than kind of no job I suppose and not to follow what she wants to do but to do things that were available to her I suppose um, and there was also a whole bunch of other kind of practical advice that was given that just didn't relate to anything that I'd sort of seen I suppose so that CV is the most important thing that you can do uh, instead of kind of being interesting and interested and engaging person to talk to and kind of having good relationships. Also that job centres and recruitment agencies were the way to get jobs. Um, and that working for free uh, looks like kind of a good opportunity and that education is a sort of investment. And it just seemed like a really skewed view of how kind of, my experience of education and my experience of working, I suppose. Then the third mental thing uh, was then sort of the options that are made available. I suppose. So you keep hearing about neat all the time, like neat, neat, neat. Uh, but neat's a really interesting concept, essentially, because it's like you have education, employment, or training. And these are the three simple linear routes to getting to somewhere a bit more successful than you are right now. Um, and by, if you go through that process, then you'll be okay, I think. Um, and I just don't think that's true. Like, it seems to me, and it seems to me from a lot of people in this room and a lot of people that I know in here who have spoken already, uh, that those, those kind of groups aren't as clear anymore. Um, and whether it's because of people's, the work that people do or whether it's because of their interests or whether it's because of kind of economic circumstance, people seem to be doing a lot of things. So you kind of do a bit of education, you do a bit of employment, you do a bit of training. Um, and I don't really know the reason for that, but it seems to me that it's not kind of these linear pathways that uh, you're kind of being told to take. Um, so we started to kind of look at this mess and this kind of crazy stuff 
and to think about what an alternative approach might be, what we could do as just like uh, two individuals to maybe look at how we could do a DIY kind of experiment around doing something different with this stuff, I suppose. So we both kind of separately had, um, had had some experience with working on markets and uh, we both loved it a lot for, for a number of reasons but we both kind of realised as well that you can pretty much do anything you like on the market, there's no, there's no straightforward path through it. So we got kind of thinking about you know, what, what would happen if we could get a bunch of young people and see if they could design and run their own market stores based on things that they love doing. Uh, which is kind of exciting, so uh, there, there are a few reasons why that seemed like a good idea, I mean the immediacy of it, you can get something up and running very quickly which kind of fitted in with the fact that we didn't have a lot of time and we were skinned so we couldn't really spend a lot of time running this kind of thing. Um, and the second is that it seems to be a really good place to practice a lot of the skills and stuff that we didn't really think were being, being given enough credit elsewhere. So things like confidence and organisation, uh, things that make you like a really resilient person for this new sort of mental world that Joe's been talking about pretty much. Um, so, Meat Market was born. Uh, we put a Twitter call out and we got five people, young people who weren't working at the time, um, to say they were interested and we arranged to meet up with them. Um, we really, really didn't know what we were doing, but we did know that we wanted to try and tackle some of these things and we wanted to sort of create an open forum for discussion around it as well. Um, so, taking these things in turn, um, the first thing, uh, perceptions, we've kind of wanted to just throw that out of the water straight away. So uh, we, we just decided that we would sort of say um, these guys are almost certainly going to be well organised, they're going to be confident, they're going to be intelligent um, and they're going to be trustworthy. So we gave them all 50 quid um, and said right, hold on to this, you can spend it on anything you like um, but we'd advise you to spend it on something to do with this project. Uh, yeah, so they all went to spend 50 quid, we never saw them again, that's the end. Um, and, um, so the second thing is really advice. Um, in the same sort of along the same tack, really. Like, who are we to give people advice? We we might know a few things. We might also know a few people who know a few things. But what we wanted to do was really just use, let them use us as a resource, pretty much, um, and and also us use them as a resource to find out what the hell we were going to be doing to, to support them, pretty much. So. Uh, we challenge them to ask us loads of questions, and we ask loads of questions of them. They ask questions of each other. Um, it was kind of cool. Uh, so we, we worked on stuff, stuff that we didn't know. We'd call in people who we thought might know the answers to if we couldn't work it out together. Um, and we blanked some space in a branding agency um, and we set up something called the B Market High Street, trademark, um, which uh, was basically a bunch of people that we knew setting up stalls, selling their, their skills, whether it's being good with money or design skills or whatever it was, for three pounds an hour to, uh, to our participants. Um, and that was pretty much just a chance to say, you guys know what you want more than we do, but we can maybe through some of our relationships and networks help you find that. You go and spend the money how you want, and, and you just take the stuff that you need from us rather than dictating that stuff to them and saying, we think this is best for you. Um, so having done that, we kind of uh, we moved forward and we 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 took uh, we sort of we got a bunch of Lego together as well, and we sort of made a big pile of Lego and said, right guys. We want you to sort of build a story of what you think is going to be the best way through this stuff. So build stuff that you want to see uh, out of Lego, and then if you think it's wrong, you can knock it down or fence it off. So we were just working together to really plot a path through all this stuff. Um, so the final thing is options, really. Um, as Joe said before, like, there seems to be this real emphasis on linear pathways through things, like you go into education to learn something and you move on. And, and this idea of sort of institutions that were made for the past and actually you know, trying to advise you at the moment about your future just seemed like a really strange thing. So we threw it pretty wide open and we said, you know, this is really just about a lot of things. It's about making a bit of money, which seemed to appeal, surprisingly. Um, it's also about uh, learning about yourself a bit, it's about becoming more resilient, um, it's about making relationships, it's about learning how to present yourself pretty much. So there was no clear path through it like, like you get with a job or with training or with an internship, so to speak. Uh, there's nothing wrong with those things, but we just wanted to sort of see if we could throw something open where, where it could be a bit wider. So, in practice... Take a breath to flip on. Yeah. Um, so in practice, uh, it ran for about six weeks. There's the advice and the option. So it ran, and there's a dodgy slide. Uh, I'll leave it anyway. So it ran about six weeks, and the five guys that came in, one got a job after about a week and left, uh, never saw him again, congratulations. Uh, one never turned up in the first place, and three of them came through and ran stalls. Um, first day of trading that we had, after all the sort of stuff we'd done, uh, was a total disaster. It rained all day, it was the quietest day they said they'd ever had on the market. 
um, nobody made any money, um, and by about five o'clock we were all feeling pretty depressed about it. Um, so we said to the guys, look, what do you want to do? And uh, their immediate sort of unilateral response was, let's just come back tomorrow and have another go, which was like, okay, all right, we're getting somewhere here, there's some resilience here, this is great. So uh, they came back and uh, had a second day, which was pretty awesome. Um, and they got a wider profit, which was great as well. So the, sort of the final thing to say about all that really is, is reflection and what we learned about reflection and also encouraging reflection. So when you're sort of smashing your way through life on this path to get to the next stage, wherever it is, it's pretty hard sometimes to find the time to stop and take stock of where you're at and what you're doing. Um, and it's really, really important to do that because you can stop and reevaluate whether what you're doing actually makes you happy and that is, that's got to be the ultimate goal really. So we encourage them to think about stuff. This was right at the start and during the process and at the end as well. So um, think about what's in your head. What is it that you, know, you think you should be doing? What's, what's the thing that you know you should be doing? What's in your heart? So what is it that you really, really love? What's, the, what's, what's your passion? And then also what's in your gut? So like, what is it that fires you up? What, what is it that gets you up in the morning? <coughs> and if you've got something, if you're getting somewhere where you've got a bit of all those three things in it, then it's probably a pretty good thing. So, and you just need to keep reevaluating that. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> that was so crazy. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I agree. Um, so I suppose also like during, not just through this kind of uh, experiment, I suppose, but also through a lot of the other work we've been doing, um, from reflections on all that stuff, I think one of the things that is the most important thing for me and for us now, I think, is like if you want to kind of make change and you want to affect people and you want to challenge the status quo. You have to make the things that you want to exist in the world, and you have to make them now. Yeah. Much like this Eddie Murphy head, um, but it's now I'm throwing it as a slide. Um, and I think like just trust your instincts, because what I've found is that if you kind of feel that something should exist, it probably should, like there are other people that probably think it should exist. You can do it super cheap, super quick, it's a genuine option, uh, it doesn't need to be a business either, like everyone will tell you that everything has to be a business, it doesn't have to be a business, it's bullshit. Um, and once something's out there, it generally sparks conversation, so Throughout this kind of process, we've been talking about what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve a lot. And whether people are interested in the actual project or they're interested in us or they're interested in ideas, it sparks a lot of other stuff happening. Um, and I think the other thing I'd say is even if you have to fake it, like I know loads of people that have started things that are really interesting and doing really amazing work by faking it. Like make a logo, make a video that acts as if it's real, start it from your bedroom, whatever. But just to kind of make a change, I suppose. And I think you don't have to wait to be given the opportunities. You don't have to be given briefs to kind of do this stuff. There's loads of space now to be really, really creative, I think. So yeah, just really quickly on that, um, sort of the thing that we took out of this, like all this stuff, talking about reflection and getting other people to reflect really made us do the same. Um, and with, uh, with, with a bunch of other guys we've been talking a lot about digital manufacturing and how excited we were by the, the capabilities of that and how it was something that really sort of existed in this world that, that wasn't really open to public access. And um, we really wanted to bring it to the high street and find some way of doing it, but like, it didn't seem like it was a, necessarily a business opportunity or any, any of the other things that Joe just talked about. Really. So um, we ended up answering a, a brief for a piece of public art sculpture by saying, Let's not do that, let's just open a workshop and make stuff that people want to make and see if they get excited about it. So that was Assemble and Join. Um, it's open now uh, in central London near Waterloo. Um, and we've got some digital manufacturing tools that you can use there to, like, for free, come in for free uh, and have workshops to, to explore creativity and also what you can make. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. It's free, there you go. So the only, the only last thing I want to just quickly touch on is um, I think the most powerful thing um, that we've learned is how important relationships are and how important kind of having good people around you is. Um, and whenever we work together, we're inviting other people in, like with Assemble and Join. So instead of making a statue, why are you making a statue? Let's just open up a place where we can bring people in and work together to do something much better. Um, whenever we've done that, it's been much better. Like, it's always amazing. Um, and I think more importantly, they're the people then, like, this kind of culture of individualism and competition is nonsense. Like when you work together, they're your support network when things go wrong. They're the people that will big you up when uh, stuff goes well. Um, so I think essentially our message is work together, open up and make shit happen. Yes. And whoa, whoa, whoa. I got one more point as well. Five guys, beautiful ladies. You can go and sit down if you want. The only thing I was going to say really was like, when you're doing that, think about and utilise what you have at your disposal. Things often seem like they're out of reach, um, but when you really sit down and analyse, like. Uh, what what you can 
what you can do and what you're capable of, like, and, and see what other people have got that can help you with. And you can find yourself doing stuff that you never thought you could ever do before. Be like this man. This man wanted to get somewhere, right? And he had a barge and a digger at his disposal, right? And he's getting there because he's using what he's got, and that's good. <laughs>